and the reviews for Spider-Man 2 have dropped today, ladies and gentlemen. And it's looking good. It's looking good in case you haven't seen. Here's a collection of reviews from some reputable sources. Shout out to Ronan with the sub. I'm seeing nothing but tens, 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 nines, 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 a few eights and a five out of five. I do think it's really weird that they put the five out of five at the bottom. I don't think the person who knows who posted this knows that five out of five is a ten. But uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> it's looking like we got another banger on our hands. It's dropping October 20th. Uh, We're going to be on that joint. So we excited. I'm curious to see if this is going to live up to the hype, because keep in mind, some reviewers did give Starfield a 10. And I don't think Starfield is a terrible game, but it's definitely not a 10 either. Uh, so we got to We got to see how accurate these reviews are. But, you know, I, I believe where there's smoke, there is fire. Um, and the crazy part that happened about with the whole Spider-Man review is um, world-renowned streamer, uh, the Black Hokage, he posted something. Um, he posted, see ya October 20th with the bald eagle, um, you know, showing support and excitement for Spider-Man 2. This was followed by some knucklehead responding and saying, remember, bro, rank this game ninth. Now... If you don't know what this guy's talking about right here, uh, this guy in this dimly lit room, um, he's talking, he's referencing this tweet right here. We're going to have some fun this year. I feel like being petty. Uh, <laughs> so he's referencing this tweet right here. So I responded to a tweet about a week ago, right, from the homie Paris, um, and he posted uh, his predictions for Game of the Year nominations, um, and here's six picks that he chose. Now, when I read this, I did not interpret this as his top six video games of the year. He just listed six games he think he thinks has the chance to be nominated for game of the year at the game awards. So, you know, I wanted to engage it. I thought it was a cool tweet. Thought I had some fun with the community. A world renowned streamer, the Black Hokage responded to this tweet with his own predictions for game of the year nominations. It clearly states it right there. My prediction for Game of the Year nominations. This does not say my top nine games of 2023. It just says a prediction for Game of the Year nominations. Goes on to list his games. Now, he posted this not thinking anything about it. Nothing crazy. But apparently this one right here, number nine. At the time in which this was tweeted, Spider-Man 2 was not out. But I figured the last one was good, so more than likely this one was going to be good. So I went ahead and threw that in there because I know people love Spider-Man. Now, where's this guy at? Uh, this knucklehead said, I ranked the game ninth. No, 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 no. I just listed nine games that I predicted would be a Game of the Year nomination. Now, what happened was... I was at Costco. I was bored. I was sitting in the parking lot. I said, you know, normally I don't entertain knuckleheads, but today I'm in the mood to entertain this idiot. Um, World renowned streamer, the Black Okage, went on to say, corny. A, the game wasn't out. B, my list wasn't even a ranking, just a list of games I think would be nominated for game of the year, which was stated at the very top. You couldn't miss that. And then C, saying it has a chance to be nominated without it being out is a compliment because it is, the game wasn't out. It's an actual compliment. And this Sony pony still found a reason to be salty. So then he went on to say, helps to not only read, but comprehend what you read. You Sony fangirls are hilarious. He went on to respond saying I was getting defensive, didn't refute any of the things that I said. So I ended it with this right here. Oh, here we go. See, he says, defensive over a fact is crazy no no the only fact is i said those are game of the year nomination predictions i didn't say those were my top nine games of the year so your defensiveness over a fact is wrong because it's not a fact you're factually wrong so i went on to say refuted none of my points because it stings to think maybe your reading level is fourth grade and muted now here's the funny part and i almost was petty on the timeline and this is why i left it alone and i just muted him we went to the Twitter of this knucklehead, and what do we see, bruh? Um, oh, called me a light-skinned content creator. Um, I'm a bully, apparently. Uh, but anyways, the funny thing that I saw was he plays Madden. I said, you know, it all makes sense now. He plays Madden. He's not the brightest bulb. 
We all know Madden players are the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to gaming. Some of the biggest idiots on the internet because they keep buying this dog shit game. There's only one sports game worse than FIFA and 2K, and that is Madden. He eats glue. Uh, I haven't checked his page since I muted him, but I just checked it, and apparently I am a light-skinned content creator who is soft, and I bullied him. Proceeds to call us soft after claiming to be bullied online. Instead of just saying, you know what? I was wrong. You didn't say that. I was feeling some type of way because Sony pays my bills, which, oh, wait, by the way, they don't. You uh, <laughs> says light skin content creators, it is sold. I don't know. Um, hopefully, you know, we can find some time to get off the internet and you can uh, afford some actual proper lighting. It's looking a little dim in there. Uh, and then maybe we can get a light bulb in that head of yours because that is not what I said. Anyways, uh, jokes aside, I'm done being petty. <laughs> I'm done being petty. Uh, but let's see. What do we, let's look into the news. Oh, you know what? I put some articles in the sub box. We can look at those. If taking shit out of con, I don't know why it's so hard for people to just admit they're wrong. Like, yo, my bad, bro. You know how many times I've been wrong on the podcast? Hold up, I sent some links to myself on Twitter. I'm opening up my um thing. I don't know what y'all are seeing my motherfucking DMs. You know, it's funny thing about that whole conversation. And I'm ended at this. Hypothetically speaking, let's say it was I did rank Spider-Man the ninth best game of 2023. Why does that upset you? Even though I didn't, why does that upset you? First of all, it still got a nod for best top 10 games of the year. But also, if you enjoy the game, which you haven't played it, by the way, so I don't even know why you're defending it so hard. Nobody has outside of reviewers. And we know you're not a reviewer because you don't even have lights in your room. Um, Why does it matter? Just enjoy the game. Like, it's just one person's opinion. But, you know, that wallpaper goes hard. Got it off a uh, wallpaper engine. Wallpaper engine. The internet is a very interesting place. Uh, all right. What other news we got for today? Now that we're done being petty. Do, 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 do. The face of Bethesda. No, not Todd Howard. Is retiring. Pete Hines spent more than 20 years at Bethesda. So basically Todd Howard's right hand man. Uh, da, 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 da check out west side guns i think i seen jg tweeting about that shit pete hines heads of publishing at bethesda softworks and the second most prominent face of the company that makes fallout elder scrolls and starfield is retiring hi damn bruh y'all forced that man into retirement oh hold on have y'all seen this image let me go i think jg posted it the sony ponies utx jg the don this the sony ponies posted this image that had us cracking up here it is right here somebody used ai and you can tell because the number of fingers on his hand somebody used ai to create a picture of spider-man stomping out an astronaut in the face and for those that don't get it it's supposed to be starfield so they're pushing the console war playstation versus uh starfield and then i seen another picture i wish i knew where it was but somebody put the 90 something uh metacritic on his head and then like the 80 something on this joint like, this is one of those things I'm like, yo, being a console fanboy is a mental illness, bro. It is. We got to get these niggas researched or something because it's just it's just video games. It's just somebody took the time to open mid journey or chat by GPT, which, by the way, none of this shit is free unless I think the Bing one is free. But niggas don't use Bing. Somebody paid to use mid journey to create an image of Spider-Man crushing Starfield. I joked about it on the on the latest podcast. I'm actually rendering it in the background. Y'all can't see, but I'm rendering it in the background. I was like, yo, I swear to God, these Sony pony niggas spend more time on Twitter and Twitter spaces than playing games. If they're not watching cutscenes in Final Fantasy 16, these niggas is in Twitter spaces. But thank thank God Spider-Man's coming out so the Sony ponies can have something to play and get off the fucking internet because you niggas is weird. Uh yo, shout out to uh a deal symbol with ideal symbol with the sub. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, after 24 years, I've decided my time of Bethesda Softworks has come to an end. I'm retiring and will begin an exciting new chapter in my life, exploring interests and passions, donating my time where I can and taking more time to enjoy life. This was not a decision I came to easily or quickly, but after an amazing career culminating an incredible launch of Starfield, it feels like the time is right. This is like, why did you do this, bro? You just gave the Sony ponies more ammo. 
I'm telling you right now, starting tomorrow, niggas is going to be in Twitter spaces talking about, oh, Spider-Man made Pete Hines from Bethesda quit. Like, I know this dude's face. If you've watched any, like, major gaming conference, you've seen Todd Howard and you've seen this dude right here. They'll be like, damn, Starfield was so bad and Spider-Man was so good. This nigga went into hiding. Like the dude when, um, what was his name when uh, No Man's Sky came out? What was that developer that went into hiding? Just like him. He's in a fallout bunker. Even though that's completely untrue, a decision like this, I'm pretty sure he's made this like in the last year. And it, he made this decision like the, in the past year. He probably told himself, all right, I'm going to help push out Starfield and then I'm retiring. That's going to be like my last hurrah. But people are going to take that narrative and they're going to say, Spider-Man did it. Spider-Man beat Pete Hines' ass. Fuck, but that's the fuck Xbox. <laughs> Oh, uh, and here's another piece of news. Uh, Analog's next console plays Nintendo 64 games in 4K. I thought this was pretty cool. For those unaware, like the Analog is a um, it's a handheld that plays any Game Boy game from the original Game Boy all the way to the latest Game Boy. I think the Advance or whatever the last Game Boy was. So I guess they're working on a new one that plays N64 games in 4K. You know, if you're into game preservation. Analog calls it reimagining of the N64, the first and only aftermarket solution supporting 100% compatibility in every region, meaning it plans to support games from the US, Europe, and Japan with its new retro console that's supported at the hardware level. Analog promises there's no emulation involved in how the Analog 3D plays N64 games, so they're going to put some type of hardware in here that's going to upscale it to 4K and improve the visuals. Almost like, because you can do that with emulators on your PC, but there isn't a, like a piece of hardware that gives you like the more excuse me authentic experience because emulation always has like weird little quirks to it so i guess this will give you a more authentic experience if you're into the game preservation yo shout out the deadpool with the sub while 4k resolution on modern monitors may be the draw for retro gaming enthusiasts with a passion for pixel counts analog is also promising era authentic display options so basically if you want to look at the small monitor you can you don't have to play in 4k and then it'll also support wi-fi Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Keep your eye on that if you're into game collection, guys. Uh, what's What else is uh, going on on Feely? Anybody got any interesting news? Da, 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 da. Uh, why you type a big-ass AI in the chat, Brandon? What up? <laughs> uh, what up? Uh, shout out to Ambivert with the sub as well as Deadpool. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 Gargoyles. Post Malone is coming to Apex Legends? What? Epic launches program to pay developers to bring old games to the Epic Game Store. Oh, shit. Uh, Twitch has stories now because all social media has to be the same. Oh, shit. Boom, boom. I don't see nothing too super interesting. Is there a trailer for this? It is. Apex Legends fans have received their fair share of it. Uh, whatever. The musician is teaming up with Respawn Games for a new event. Get ready for two weeks of beautiful mayhem, the singer says. All right, let's look at this. I just want y'all to know, this is how you know Apex is dying. And this is coming from somebody who was a super Apex fan. The moment they start putting celebrities in the commercial, like Call of Duty, that's when you know the game is... All we need is an Eminem song in the background. It's over. It's fuck it. This game's cooked. Res me! Yo! Now, why should I be excited? Why? Did someone res me? Why? Why should I be excited about that? What, what? What was that supposed to do for me? A game that's literally... I mean, this is a great metaphor for the game right here. Him laying down, clapped. That is the game in the current state right now. Yeah, he actually plays, but why should why should I be excited about this? Is it a new, like, hero? A skin? What is this? There's no explanation. As much as I love Apex, this trailer was meh. Absolutely no reason for this to exist um anyways i never played apex what happened to the game in my opinion it's just run its course it's been four years that's all every every good thing comes to an end including um including like Fortnite. uh what's the name in an article they laid off um 900 people at epic and in in the reports they were claiming it's because Fortnite's not making a lot of money anymore it's like every 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 when you're on a high there's no way to go but down you can maintain that high but eventually your legs do get tired. Look at for all the dogs. Like, <laughs> let me chill. Um, 
According to a blog post published on Monday, the company said the program... Oh, Epic launches program to pay devs to bring their old games to the Epic Games Store. According to a blog post published on Monday, the company said the program dubbed now on Epic was launched to make it easier for the Epic Games Store users to discover back catalog games and to better compete with Steam. Mainly, it will allow participating developers and publishers the opportunity to increase their net revenue from users. Uh, okay, I get what they're saying. I don't know why, but I'm, like my brain went like straight to retro games. So yeah, the issue with the Epic Game Store, like when it launched, it mainly just had new games on it. And going forward, that's all they would launch. Basically, like games like KOTOR and I don't know, whatever whatever game that came out from like five years ago. They want to get all. They basically want to become a full-blown Steam competitor, not just like new games and stuff like that. Um, titles that are eligible for the now on Epic program will enjoy 100% revenue boost for the first six months of their release on the Epic Game Store. After that, they'll get 88% with a 12% revenue split. That's not bad. You get to keep almost 90% of the money on their platform. I believe Steam takes 30%. So don't be surprised if you see an influx of older games on the Epic Game Store if you like to use it. Uh, ma, 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 man. Ma, 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 man. What up, J-Star? We see you. Interesting. So if there's any game developers in the chat, uh, developers who would rather wait to enroll in the now on the Epic program have until December 31st, 2024 to do so. When they do, all eligible games must be on the Epic Game Store by June 30th, 2025. Don't talk to my man. If you have any game developers in the chat, get your game on there, man. Make some money. Uh, Twitch has stories now because all social media must be the same. I saw this this morning. So basically, IG stories, Snapchat, <laughs> Snapchat, the old, uh, what was it? What was the Twitter joint? Fleets? <laughs> yeah, they got it on Twitch now. So don't be surprised if you start to see streamers posting to their stories. The difference is their shit will last 48 days. I mean, 48 days, 48 hours. Uh, the feature is limited to partners and affiliates who have streamed once in the past 30 days and will roll out by the end of the week on an ongoing basis. My thing is, like, do y'all really want to see stories from, like, streamers? Like, what is it going to be, like, niggas behind the scenes sitting at their computer showing off sweat stains at their damn chair? I don't know if I'll post on here. Uh, did you see the official Adonis video? Not, yeah, I just played it on stream. I just did a whole breakdown. I got a video coming. I, I got a video coming. On the Adonis video. It's going to be good. It's probably going to be one of my best videos, bro. I'm good. Like, hey, guys, sitting in my chair, but I'm not live. Like, bitch, just press live. Like, uh, just more TikTok clips. Nah, because it's not even that. It's stories like IG. It's not like interesting clips. It's just, hey, guys, I'm at TwitchCon. <laughs> Come find me. Uh, this will only be useful if the audience finds it useful but like i don't know maybe i'll post once or twice on there to see what kind of viewership it gets because i do i think i have like 178 thousand followers on here or something like that so maybe that'll wake up the old audience i don't know but t i'll test it out but like i'm not gonna hold my breath on this shit um uh, what else we got but, uh, but uh, any other stories but uh, i found a crazy gaming article i can share can you share it? Nah, what is it? Before you share the link, what is it? Uh, <laughs> Intel's 14th gen launches, promising 23% better Starfield FPS versus AMD, or Bethesda could just optimize their game. Climate activists land devastating blow against big oil by disrupting minor Tekken tournaments. Yeah, I've seen that shit. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I don't care. Some people during a Tekken tournament, some people hopped on the stage to protest big oil. That's the story. Uh, and they got laughed off the stage. Uh, uh, Spider-Man 2's review cluttered by no less lovable action. Oh, you know what? I think I, uh, I, think I had the Spider-Man review. I haven't watched this. Let's watch this. I saw the scores, but I didn't really, I didn't read any articles. I didn't see what people are actually saying. Let's see what the people are saying. This is a 14 minute review, Jesus. Hey man, glad you could make it. With Marvel's Spider-Man 2, Insomniac has the unenviable task of following up two riveting superhero fantasies full of excitement and heart. Hopefully this is spoiler free. While that free. may sound like a good problem to yeah. have, the question becomes, where do you go from there? Well, its answer is to double down. Double down on Spider-Man, double down on the size of the map. Double Some people were mad IGN gave it an 8. I'm gonna be fair, the game looks like an 8 to me. I'm, I'm surprised it got so many 10s. That's why I was like, I'm, I want to get my hands on it for myself.
and sequences. In doing so, the studio has crafted another consistently exciting That's a cool camera ride angle. Ride and the best story of the series yet. But stand the original on Yeah, it is still good. In other ways, and it can look a bit like two Spider-Man games pointing at each other. The excellent combat hasn't gotten old, but it is largely the same fun as before. The reason people were mad is because Miles Morales in the first game got nines. Yeah, but I think it's fair to give it an eight if they did, because this is the third game in the series, which means the expectations are higher than the first two games. I don't even think people count Miles Morales really as his own game. It's kind of like DLC, but there were no expectations for the first game. Uh, but with this one, there are higher expectations. You're supposed to innovate and build upon what was already great. But if you don't, then, you know, it's just four. And hey, eight is good. Larger map, most of the open world activities found within it are in desperate need of evolution. The result? is a blockbuster in the most modern sense of the word. Undeniably thrilling for long stretches, but by the numbers for others. It's like, it's like, it's a, a, a way I can articulate it, right? Is it's like, um, LaMelo Ball, right? Uh, LaMelo Ball got his first all-star nod, was it two years ago, I believe? And then last year, they, he got an all-star, he, he went to the all-star game, but the team got bounced off they have to now the expectation is they have to perform in the playoffs because you have an all-star on the team does that make sense like a natural step is you're a beginner in the nba you became an all-star now it's time to take your team to at least the second round in the playoffs and i think that's what people are looking for in a sequel uh you can't do the same thing over or yeah you're gonna get an eight Despite a couple of new tricks up its sleeve, yeah, but that team sucks. Yeah, cool. especially uh, Miles Bridges. Smell anymore, <laughs> but it still feels incredibly. Yeah, cool stay out of trouble. Into. The rhythm of precision dodges, the new perfect parries, so you're not only swerving and striking now. You gotta put it in anime That's turns so people will understand. <laughs> as it's chasing high hit combos to keep the fight as stylish as possible. Yeah, and Kai Jones crazy ass. The movement is smooth and the hits are crunching like some sort of I seen an article that said that Spider-Man 2 is the best non Superman game ever created because basically you can just fly in the game with the super suit and I've seen some clips. I'm like, this is crazy. You don't even got to swing anymore. I bet you the parry system is better than Liza P. That's not hard to do, dog. Come on, every man. one of your foes of course, of course, Spider-Man is. Elegance are brought together in a brick to the face ballet as enemies are thrown around like dolls, juggled in the air, slammed across concrete floors, and slung into each other like body armored bowling pins. But naturally, never killed. Every bone in their body may be broken and every organ punctured, but of course, they'll somehow live to commit crimes again. Overall, there's slightly less emphasis on stealth encounters this time around than in either Spider-Man or Miles Morales. As someone who found the stealth action of the previous games a little simplistic and routine, this new louder- How y'all feel about that? It's more action-oriented versus stealth. How y'all feel about that? Approach as well. I personally didn't mind the stealth sections. Naturally, there are story missions where Miles or Pete have to slink across ceilings and take out folks who never look up. But uh, eight is responsible because they did add some stuff on top of the map, but not too much. Yeah, like I feel like an eight is a fair review. Like I personally question the tens. I'm like, what here is a ten? Man, two is much more. Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Based off the gameplay, I'm excited about this game. But based off the gameplay I'm seeing right now, this looks exactly like the last two games. And I've, I've been on record saying plenty of times, the main reason I'm excited about this game is because of the story. So the, the that's what I'm thinking. Like, if it got tens, like, the story has to be phenomenal. Because from a gameplay standpoint, he just acknowledged they actually removed something. It's mostly combat focused. There's not even any stealth sections like that. So they actually removed features. <laughs> to get into the action with many abilities designed to let you group up enemies and then deal big damage to that all looks cool, them though. at once, rather than spreading them out to pit them off one by one. But once Parker dons the symbiote suit already shown off in trailers, the gooey, angry powers that come with it make a big gooey. impact, adding more of a brawler nature to fights and giving Peter a set of tools to match Miles' satisfying electric abilities. One area the Insomniac has made improvements in is that Spider-Man 2 offers significantly more in the way of enemy variety. So you will no longer be battering the same five balaclava bullies with baseball bats. Certain enemies are weak to different... I did feel like the combat was like too easy because like a lot of the enemies were the same, so that's good to hear that there's like more enemies 
types. Types of abilities, such as electric or symbiotic. I mean, reasonable. I, I got what you were saying, uh, Jamal. Extra what up, bro? Fights. It's by no means revolutionary stuff, but a welcome added level of complexity that makes you consider which powers or even which Spider-Man are best for the job. Were you one of the people that didn't hate the MJ and Miles stealth missions? Nah, I didn't like those missions. That shit was boring. There are many perch takedown possibilities offered and new toys to play with too, such as the web line, which allows you to create your own high wires over your enemies to prey on them from above. It's a fun Damn, so the, the stealth is the stealth is even easier. Cause I didn't think it was hard, but the, you can now create eight ways to go around. That's crazy. To reshape the tightly designed arenas into a battlefield more in your favor. And in doing so, redecorate the room. JD was saying it was too easy and he had to put it on hard. Damn. Wrapped people pinatas. On the topic of of covert ops the playable mj sequences speaking of mj return and while they are more involved this, this time come out at midnight i don't know story well they never add up to more than simple stealth missions or splashes of basic third person shooting she's certainly not sidelined but it does feel like a little more oh done brother to make sections a bit more did y'all did y'all see this right here she snuck up on the dude got caught and she's getting shot but didn't die basic this bitch don't got no powers shooting. She's certainly not sidelined. Look at this shit. It does feel like a little more could have been done to make her game. Now, now she Wolverine? <laughs> they know what they're doing showing that clip. The new web wings are undoubtedly a standout. Like Batman yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This, yo, there's a genre on TikTok of people who literally just swing around as Spider-Man and play music. And I'm not gonna lie. I've been in a couple of those streams. It's pretty entertaining to watch. This is a little flight shit. This is what I'm excited about gameplay wise. This looks pretty fucking fun. And can now glide and soar with ease through the city. And web swinging is as gratifying Yo. as I remember. And still one of the best ways to get around any open world. I watched them going to bed. Yeah, it's almost like Spider-Man ASMR. The story swings just as elegantly between upbeat hijinks and solemn moments of reflection. It's undeniable. I'm not gonna lie. Normally, I'm not the type to like complain about face models and like don't take this as like I care a lot. Obviously, we're gonna still play the game. That's gratifying. But Peter looks like he says the N word now. The best ways to get compared to like the original. World. The original face model. Where that face at? The story swings just as elegantly between. Like you can't tell me he doesn't look like he says the N word. He looks like he he does. First of all, I I realize I realize what's wrong with this. Um, not only Peter in this game doesn't look like he's a kid from Queens because remind reminder, he is a white boy from New York, and white people from New York they tend to have a little bit more drip for, uh, compared to he looks like a white boy from Nebraska. He looks like he's from Omaha. He looks like he's from Alabama. Like he doesn't look like he's from New York, and I think that's the actual issue. But he, yeah, he looks like he says the N word. I don't know, man. <laughs> so he got a fat ass neck. Yo, chill. Why are you looking at that nigga neck so damn hard? It's undeniably a fun time to don the suit and enter a Kratos like rage mode where you push in both thumbsticks and start. His voice actor's 40 and they modeled him after that. Interesting. Never once forget to take their eyes off the humanity inside these superhumans. The oh, they brought the deaf girl back. Hey. And Villains. As Spider-Man 2 tackles the reasoning behind each character's actions and the good that can hide in the shadows of evil. Avoiding spoilers, the basic premise revolves around Craven the Hunter, who is, well, craving a hunt. For those uninitiated in the character, he's essentially the Predator, an apex hunter blessed with super strength who has chosen New York as his next hunting ground. The great hunt begins. It's a great starting point that sends the city's hero and villain dynamic into flux as he sets his sights on the biggest prey possible. There are also smaller stories at play though, ones that may seem less important when compared to the citywide chaos, but feel like potential world enders to those who inhabit it. Both spider That's crazy. Why they say there's less important stories going on and then they show the black Spider-Man? What's that about, bro? And tackle the most extreme examples of trying to manage a work-life balance you could imagine. Exploring a range of personal issues, including strange relationships and loss that plague us as humans. Hey, chill in Nebraska before Terrence Crawford pull up. My bad, my bad, my bad. It's the best written story in the series yet, if still a little cheesy at times, with performances worthy of the script. It's a real triumph that manages to cover such a wide spectrum of themes without suffering from tonal whiplash. You made it. I thought you said this was a startup. 
primarily a Peter Parker story, Spider-Man 2 explores his relationship with MJ and the reintroduction of childhood best friend Harry Osborn into his life. It's always compelling to watch him contend with which pieces of the past <laughs> these AI generated faces, what the fuck? <laughs> and what future self he wishes to be. No matter how hectic a scenario gets though, he always has a quippy one-liner ready to be expertly delivered by actor Yuri Lowenthal. I really should have stretched. Miles still gets his time in the spotlight however and has some fantastic moments towards the end of the main campaign. Even if some of the more interesting explorations of his Puerto Rican African American culture are reserved for side missions. Obviously what you take from the story and it's Yeah, they said they put characters. they put the black culture on the side. That's crazy. They said black culture is a side mission. That's a bold statement, Asandia. <laughs> On the surface, it's another thrilling superhero story packed full of surprises, cameos, and Easter eggs. But there are deeper meanings to be found here too. Mr. Morales, is it? Uh, are you sure this isn't something you can handle yourself? I'm sure. Spider-Man 2, and to an extent all great Spider-Man stories, tackle themes of adolescence and puberty, a time of uncertainty for even the most normal of teenagers trying to control bodily fluids. I gotta get better at fluid. Nigga, what? We join Miles at this exact point in his life with What? <laughs> First of all, I'm pretty sure that that line, I gotta get better at fluid management, is is talking about his cartridges. <laughs> What the fuck is he talking about? Yo, I see is wild, bro. <laughs> like, and first of all, he's a yo, Miles is a teenager. This thing is talking about wet dreams and shit. That shit is yo, kind of Roblox. I don't know, bro. Need to keep that Minecraft talk the fuck out of here, dog. Family ties straight. Here we go to the exaggerated swagger this shit again bro facing new challenges and life decisions of genuine importance being posed for the first time like there's no way there's no way and i'm i'm i haven't played this game but i'm about 90 percent sure when he was climbing on that wall wall he was talking about managing the fluid for his uh his spider webs there's no way this nigga miles morales was climbing on the wall talking about managing his nut juice what the fuck is this nigga talking that's a wild that <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking insane. They put that in the review. Like, <laughs> All the range needed for the role, continuing to excel as a young. Oh my god! For our eyes, maybe one of those scholarships has my name on it. For Peter, these themes manifest in a much more physical sense. He's in his early 20s. I know they thought they ate with that line in the script. Hell nah, bro. <laughs> it's a, mm, this the one. His way through yet more bodily changes. This physical right, my semen levels are low. <laughs> ...mental health issues that have developed for each Spider-Man. Venom hangs over the main characters like a specter of grief, drenching them in black as if in a state of mourning. The story does a great job at gently exploring these issues and how we're not healthily addressed. Personal demons can eat at us and lead to people we care about being unintentionally caught in the crossfire of the anger and pain those feelings can produce. Of course, a hero is nothing without its villains, and Spider-Man's rose gallery is almost unparalleled. Outside of the likes of Venom, Craven, and Lizard seen in the trailers, in oh, the symbiote suit, yeah, it looks cool. Hidden up its sleeve. Craven looks cool too. In any of these, except to say that Spider-Man 2 opens with a bang, offering up a sense of scale not previously seen in. Shout the Ibusu with the subs. Fueled reintroduction that tests how well you remember the combat, as well as providing a few new tricks. It's also the start of one of the new side story villain threads that are optional. And while those don't offer anything overly new in terms of gameplay, they do add valuable extra scraps of story. Speaking of boss battles, that's one area that Spider-Man 2 takes a noticeable step up. Hey, okay. Ready for your annual physical? There are evolving brawls packed full of danger that put you gotta fight the let you gotta fight the dinosaur lizard from fucking rampage. All of your skills to the test. And yes, I know this lizard and parries a key as well a joke. as using environmental making a joke. tools Good. dotted around the arenas for your benefit. The latter third of the campaign essentially becomes a boss rush mode that will put the sturdiest of thumbs to the test. Not necessarily because did I beat Liza P? Yeah, I beat it. But because of the sheer number of times, you'll be hammering that square button. These ladies video coming soon. Are where the majority of Spider-Man 2's thrills lay, however as it really hits its stride late on and emphatically wraps up a tale with miles of emotional it's depth that once threatens to peter out. Your dad used to give me that exact same look. 
despite what loftier ambitions the roughly 18 hour story may have, this is still unapologetically an old school approach to open world games. That's what I love to hear, 18 hour campaign, bro. This game does not take forever to beat. That's what we love to hear. Design, and nowhere is this displayed more clearly than in its optional quests. To their credit, the way you can highlight side objectives by pressing the right stick is a welcome upgrade over mere icons on a map. This isn't a world that beckons exploration or discovery necessarily, but it is a step in the right direction toward creating greater immersion and mercifully less time spent looking at the map screen. That being said, I can't help but have hoped for a few more flushes of Gotham City to make their way into New York. Something like the spontaneous shock of man bat jumping at you out of nowhere went a long way to making Rocksteady's superhero open Or um, what was it? Was it in, was it in Spider-Man or Miles Morales? What's the name showed up? Those were cool side missions. Hopefully it has some of those. Um, what's the dude who can copy your fighting style? What is his name again? He was in the shitty uh, Black Widow movie. What is his fucking name? Taskmaster. This nigga said Moon Knight. No. <laughs> I didn't say the crazy guy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully there's something like Taskmaster's side missions. That'd be cool. This nigga said Moon Knight. What the fuck? <laughs> more reactive than more oh, shit. oh, he was in the DLC of my, of my fault. <laughs> but I was talking about Taskmaster. Definitely not talking about no damn Moon Knight. See Insomniac series stuck in time when it comes to its side content and the way it presents itself to you. Standard open world filler activities are here aplenty. And that's one area where Spider Man 2 has. See, this, that, that's the type of shit I'm not trying to do. That's a, No, thank you. This looks boring moved with the times or show much ambition at all. Collectibles, photo opportunities and rather basic street crimes are still here and despite having a few slightly more interesting quirks this time around they only very occasionally excite. Granted the additional enemy variety in play makes these activities take a little longer to get old than they did in the past but this still isn't quite a strong enough twist. Hey. Prioritizing photographing these jabronis over saving a house. Yeah they, they was talking about it in the review ethos. They look trash too. Guys, can we take this outside? There's also a clip she's getting shot and doesn't die. There are exceptions to the rule, however. There are a couple of more involved quest lines that are much more nourishing, almost to the point of being a series of mini main plot missions. My favorite was the flame quest line, which begins with simply helping out the fire brigade, but quickly spins a layered and mysterious web. It's full of twists, turns, and surprises. Oh shit, they got Jeff Bezos in this bitch. Oh my God, we gotta take down Amazon in Spider-Man 2. Okay, that should be a good mission short comic book <laughs> yeah. that breaks itself from the rest of Spider-Man 2's optional time trials and simple puzzle mini games. All of this contributes to fighting back I haven't heard any major spoilers Blackbeard, nah. A city now twice the size of what we've seen before. There are 14 unique districts, each with its own set of objectives to complete before you can unlock fast travel to that part of the map. Not making fast travel readily available is smart and truthfully I barely used it anyway as swinging and gliding around the city is so much more fun. Gliding yeah I feel like the Spider-Man games are the very rare case where like i will use it sometimes but it's so fun to swing around like you don't even use fast travel half the time unless you're really at the end of the game and you're just trying to be done as long as you can skip those puzzles i'm good again i feel that shout out to reiko with the sub Especially great for crossing long distances thanks to the numerous wind tunnels that Is that a Black Panther suit? New that one? I don't, know, I don't think that's Black Panther streets, dog. Flanked by Art Deco architecture and modern mirror-like skyscrapers. Of course, if you're going to be catching a reflection in that glass so often, you'll want to look your best. Looking fresh. Thanks. I know it's going to be amazing on PC. Fear not, the mods are going to go crazy. Dozens of suits to unlock with myriad colorful... Although it might... Hey, Junzi, it might... It might not take two or three years before it gets on PC. Because keep in mind, Sony's been on record that they want to bring more of their games to PC sooner. They're embracing the platform, so it might really only be a year. Uh, we'll see. From modern interpretations of classics to returning fan favorites, there are treats waiting for Spider-Man fans of all generations. In keeping with Insomniac's track record, the music behind it all is stellar, with Miles and Peter's respective signature tunes playing depending on who you're controlling. A highlight though is the theme that follows in Craven's footsteps, which bears more than a passing resemblance to Howard Shaw's Urukai War March from the Lord of the Rings score. Interesting. It soundtracks a world that looks stunning, even when played in performance mode at a very stable 60 FPS, as I did for almost all of my playthrough. Only way to play. Spider-Man 2 is a technical marvel as a whole. I can't say I noticed one drop frame in my dozens of hours of play. You hear that game developers? He says, step your shit up. This game runs well, it's fun and it runs well. That's what I like to hear. A game that fucking works, doesn't need a patch. You hear that bug Thesda? 
perspective. This allows Spider-Man 2 to shine in its most jaw-dropping moments, of which the story offers many. As explosive action, sparkling electrical... I don't care, nothing about no ray tracing, Ronan. I always play on performance. Screen. So, what do you think? That was a clever edit. In a spectacular series, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is both blessed and cursed. Its story of two Spider-Men is a great time and a Spidey fan's dream to play through as comic book pages are brought to life, elegantly walking the tightrope between light humor and heavier themes. Meanwhile, Insomniac refines a successful formula of combat and web swinging without revolutionizing either in major ways, making them comfy and familiar with just enough new tweaks and abilities to elevate them to fun new heights. The part that yeah, yeah, yeah. actually needed a radical rethinking is the open world of New York City, which mm. has been made bigger but not better. With an exhaust. Damn, he said it's kind of a boring open world. Am I am I hearing he said I got Ubisoft vibes from this? This sounds like a, a run through and play the main story type of game, which I'm not mad. Costing checklist of mostly repetitive side activities, but it's he said it's 18 hours, Donatello. Spider-Man adventure that delivers Insomniac's best tale yet, and despite its open world falling short, it is a reliably fun superhero power trip. And you know what? Screw it. It really did make me feel like Spider-Man 2. For more open world game reviews, why not check out our review of Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty or Assassin's Creed. Hmm, interesting. What the comments saying? What the comments saying? Uh, empathetically wraps up a tale with miles of emotional depth that never once threatens to peter out. Well done, writings. 